So yeah, like Valerie said, uh, my name is Robert. I'm from Poland, and I've been doing games for quite a lot of long time. And I want to tell you about uh, our way of making games. And uh, to get to that, I'll give you some history. So uh, I started making games in 2005, doing uh, making uh, them with Adobe Flash. I don't know who, who knows Adobe Flash here. Well, three, four, four, five people. Okay. So basically, that that was uh, a browser plugin that allowed you to do uh, some kind of animations and interactions, and it was all pretty simple. It got very advanced later, but uh, but it was pretty fun. We have uh, we had actually this is my screen of my first game where you were flying helicopters and shooting stuff. Uh, there were a lot of game portals and who were offering people uh, money for their games, like buying licenses, and uh, they were really popular. There was a whole f like website called Flash Game License where it was kind of store where you could sell your license to people who are interested in it. And uh, there are still some sites you probably know, like Newgrounds, Congregate, Armor Games. They were like very big uh, portals with uh, Flash games. And then it was all pretty nice and cool, but then uh, it all went down because of uh, uh, iOS. Steve Jobs told, told that uh, Flash is not good anymore, and it all died. So uh, we were thinking, okay, what what shall we do with our knowledge of, of making games? And we did uh, a PC title. And it was a pretty uh, complex uh, RTS game called The Few. And we published it on Steam and on other PC portals, uh, PC uh, platforms. And uh, it was actually, uh, quite a lot of work. Uh, two, two, we were two people on the team at the, to at the time. Uh, it took us uh, about a year to actually make the game. And we actually sold it for like $30,000, which was like okay, but not really uh, super, uh, super fancy and, and so on. And after we did the few, we were so fed up with all those like huge project and a lot of um, work that we wanted to do something very quickly and just to relax. So we did uh, a pretty crazy game called Crazy Pandas, where you only have like pandas flying down from the screen and you tap them or click them and they explode in a, uh, some bloody splutter. And it took us like six weeks to make it. And that was uh, pretty fun. We didn't stress, we didn't uh, really uh, had to f overthink it, and we put it just we just put it on uh, mobile, and the game earned us like ten ten thousand dollars. And I started doing math, and like, come on, two people spend a year, and we only got like three times more than what we did in six weeks. So why? Maybe we can, why, why make bigger games where maybe we can make something smaller and have fun doing that? And uh, yeah, that was our problem, that if you put, put those games on a big uh, platforms like Steam, like PC, like all the other bigger stores, uh, they're already full of other games and you have to compete with that and your game have to kind of be better or more lucky to, to get through those source. And I don't really, w I, w I wasn't feel very good with uh, base, basing my business on luck. So we figure out we have to do something uh, other than that. Okay, this slide is totally broken. But yeah, we, <laughs> we were searching for our own way to, to, f uh, to uh, put our games in front of people. And we've chosen HTML5 because uh, where we tried the PC market with uh, the few and we didn't like it that much. And we tried uh, mobile uh, market as well and we didn't like it that much. So, uh, and we knew browser games quite a lot from all those game, all those times with Flash and HTML5 kind of uh, allowed us to make browser games still. 
And it was a risky move because this technology uh, in 2012, several years ago, was very bad. And right now it's a little bit better. Uh, so yeah, it was we were having some problems at the beginning, but we stick to the HTML5 and it actually uh, got us pretty good. So we had those ideas that we will make games that are simple, small, really polished, so nice graphics, a lot of animations, a lot of uh, nice uh, in, like interactions, particles and so on. But the whole gameplay will be uh, not very complex. And we wanted to have fun doing those games. So uh, we figure out we'll experiment and do some ideas that maybe kind of will be funny and we'll see how it goes. So it turns out we were doing hyper casual games before this term was created. And so right now those games are called hyper, hyper casual games. Uh, within the HTML5, we've chosen two uh, engines, two frameworks. One is Construct2, one is Phaser. Uh, I don't know if they're better or worse on, uh, than other uh, tools. We work with those and they are doing qu quite, quite okay. Uh, so this is how our revenue looked like, like all those times. Uh, you see flash times, you see some spikes with uh, our PC game, and then we then we started f doing HTML5, and uh, yeah, you can see it's all went up quite quite a lot. So how we did it? What what are we doing with uh, HTML5 games? Because it's pretty easy to sit down do a game in two three weeks, and then then what? When you have a finished, ready game and you won't like to uh, earn your living on it? Uh, the first option is web game portals. There are still a lot of them out there. Uh, some of them moved from Flash and only do HTML5. Some are still doing Flash games, which is kind of strange. But uh, yeah, it's, it's quite easy to contact them. Because usually where there is a, a game portal, there is some kind of a contact form. And what I do, I send those owners of those portals an email. Like, hey, we have a game. Maybe you would like to try it out. And some of them are still still buying licenses for the games. Some of them have uh, some other ways of uh, generating revenue, like sharing uh, revenue with from, from advertisement that the game uh, makes. And some of them have a subscription model where you uh, where users like pay some money for to access uh, all catalog of games and then this money is divided between the games like based on time or uh, number of plays or whatever so that's uh that's basically a model that were uh, functioning for us in during the flash times and it is right now but there are also other ways uh, okay, so that's how uh, licensing uh, works, right? And uh, okay, so this is how uh, our revenue consists of. Like subscription uh, is the blue uh, field, and ads are the red one, and licensing is the yellow one. So you can see we have. Uh, nice based base uh, made of uh, subscriptions which is kind of nice because we have some money flowing in every month and we know we we will have uh, food and shelter and we can plan ahead a little bit and uh, licensing and ads well it can happen or uh, it could not happen so basically it's nice when it's when it comes but it's like it, it's not needed for us, right? We would be okay just living off subscription, but uh, if we have more money, we don't really uh, have problem with that. Uh, so where where do you find companies interested in, in licensing? Uh, apart from web portals, uh, LinkedIn is a very good way to search for, for uh, people who would be interested in your games. 
uh, usually somebody who's, uh, whose title is like a licensing manager, he's probably interested in licensing. And there is also a, a forum for HTML5 game developers called HTML, HTML5 Game Dev. And there is a whole section of uh, people who uh, like give out their contacts to, to uh, sponsors, to people who buy licensing. And you can learn like which guy is OK and which company is have some like problems working with and so on. So it's it's a cool way, cool place to hang out as well. Uh, so we also set up. Uh, I know. Uh, so basically, uh, we figure out we want exclude anybody, and this is actually a uh, a screenshot of a portal that's uh, running in Pakistan, and we spoke with those guys and figure out okay, well they can have our games and we'll just take a split of the revenue. And uh, we did that. And those guys told us that, uh, you know what, like nobody wanted to work with us because everywhere we, we went and we asked, hey, do you have some games? The developers said like, yeah, you're from Pakistan. You probably won't earn us any money. So now we don't want to work with you. And actually most of those games are ours. And it seems like everybody in Pakistan is playing our games. And it's quite a lot of people there. So uh, uh, this is an example of like f a platform nobody else wanted to touch. And nobody else wanted to put our games there. And we did that. And it turned out really good for us. We actually set up our own website as well. It, at first, it was aimed uh, that we want to show the games to other uh, portals. But uh, we soon discovered that actually there are people who are coming to our site not to uh, buy the games by licensing, but just play. So we made that level less like a portfolio, more like uh, uh, a portal. So there's uh, some, some players who are like playing directly from, from our, our site. And uh, another platform that uh, it's possible for HTML5 games is uh, potato phones. Basically, if you have like very old phone, uh, you can still run HTML5 games there. If it's not like super old, but like let's say eight, ten years, it should work. And uh, again, nobody else is doing games for for those phones anymore. And you'll be surprised, like how many people, like in Africa or uh, in in Asia, are still using those because they don't have any other option, and they still want like to play games. And yeah, they on, they can only play like our games because nobody else is doing games for those phones. Uh, we actually just uh, f uh, recently got in uh, some kind of deal with. Uh, a manufacturer in, in, in India who uh, they are making uh, potato phones right now because they figure out like, yeah, people are not very, they won't buy smartphones because they're uh, too expensive for them. But we will make a phone that will cost like $10. So even with today, the $10 electronic, uh, it's not very fancy thing. But we've, we've made our games work there. And we put like just for now just one game on their phone, and I got some report recently that in one day like three million people played the game, and I was like, well, this has to be some kind of a mistake. Like, no game is played three million times in one day, and they said, no, no, we have so many, so many users of this uh, ten dollar phone, so it's pretty cool. Uh, so there are, for those uh, older phones, there are a lot of smaller uh, stores. Nobody actually know about them because they only are for those like potato phones. And if you don't have a potato phone, you don't know where, where to go to look for games for, for that platform. Uh, so uh, we actually figure out like it's too segmented for us. There are too many of them. So we have some uh, like publisher for those uh, older phones. And they actually 
we we give them games and they uh, propagate it for like all uh, strange uh, stores for for old phones. So everybody who's doing uh, mobile games are doing games for uh, Android and iOS, which is cool. As it's a lot of people have a lot of success there, but our biggest success was actually on BlackBerry. Do you know what BlackBerry is? Okay, so uh, BlackBerry, it was, it's kind of old news, but BlackBerry was uh, introducing some, some store of theirs, and we, we just made the game and put it there, and I think they, it was a deal that you get like $100 if you, public, if you push your game before the store launches, and we figured out, hey, we have a game ready, and 100 bucks is not a big deal for just uploading a file. So we did that, and this game called uh, Scribbles, uh, it went huge, actually, because it was <laughs> only good game on BlackBerry when the store launched, and like all the other games were not that good. And a lot of people played it. Uh, we had some much more money than the original 100 bucks coming in from, from that game. And actually, BlackBerry asked us to go around to some events and show the game on on uh on their like uh, presentation or some kind of like event so we got some travel we go sightseeing and yeah we were showcasing the games on blackberry i think sadly <laughs> right now this store is not longer uh, operating, they changed to change it to accept like APK files, and right now it's flooded with all the uh, Google Play uh, games. So it's not possible to like you you you'll be just you'll have the same situation as on Google Play there. But at the moment they were introducing the store, there were no games and a lot of users, which is like the best situation for developer. Another example is Firefox uh, Marketplace. This is uh, Andrew, one of uh, our team members, and it was uh, his like hobby idea. He was he was very passionate about Firefox, and he wanted to put our games there. And I said like, okay, man, if you want really to do that, please do. But like you, uh, a Firefox Marketplace didn't introduce any kind of uh, monetization. So I would say like, yeah, we won't get any money out of it, but if you want to make mon make game for Firefox or Mar uh, OS, just please do. And he uploaded the game there. It again, game went very very successful because it was, uh, I would say, the only well polished and nicely looking game in this in that store at the time. And it didn't do us any money because. Uh, there was no monetization, but actually, a fire, like Mozilla asked Andrew to again to travel to some events and to show the games there. So he went for Brazil for two weeks, I think, and to GDC and somewhere else as well. So basically, he he got three pretty cool trips out of uploading a zip file to a to a server, which is also a pretty cool deal, if you ask me. Uh, we did the same with Amazon App Store. So uh, right now, again, Amazon uh, allows uh, people to just upload APK, but they also introduce like some HTML5 uh, native games that are possible on their on their store. And as far as I know, we were the only one who actually used that feature. There were no other HTML5 games uploaded. Everybody was uploading APK, and just because we used the feature that they have for uploading HTML5 games. They again uh, featured us on the on the store and asked us for to come some to some conference. Uh, so it was pretty cool deal for us. If that game would be in other technology, you we wouldn't get any featuring or any interest from from Amazon, I, I guess. So another way of uh, things that is possible with HTML5 is being a part of a bigger application. So basically, since uh, HTML5 game is basically a website, it can be easily integrated into some other application. 
So uh, there are applications like for kids. Uh, we, we work with an uh, application called Kid Kiddos, and they have like coloring books, some stories, some videos, and games as well as a part of the main app. And basically, for us, it's we have a lot of users there, and we don't have any uh, costs for acquisition or mo like marketing or anything, because they are like uh, doing that for the for the uh, kiddos application and we just get uh, free users basically and quite a lot of them. Another big thing for, for HTML5 games is uh, uh, messaging, messaging or chat games, uh, mainly Facebook instant games. Uh, so basically you can play a game on the messenger with your friends or basically most of the uh, chat uh, platforms are actually doing that right now. Uh, again, everybody have a messenger installed on your phone, I guess, and it only takes like three, four taps to get to our game. So for us, it's a lot of opportunity. And uh, again, we were the, one of the first people who uh, got into the, the platform and since then, like the beginnings were very easy. You only had like, I think 100 games and 3 billion users. So that's like amazing. Right now there are uh, more and more games. It's still much better than like Google Play with 6,000 uh, applications uploaded daily. daily. But uh, it's getting more and more crowded every day. So I guess it's not that easy to get through on Facebook messaging uh, as it was in the beginning. But you have all other other uh, chats which which are not uh, that advanced in, in games as well, like WeChat, like Telegram, uh, some other. So, uh, well, we figure out like our idea is to be as close as possible to when the platform launches, because then you get the most visibility for the games, and that's the perfect moment. Because like the soonest you will be the somewhere, the the better for you, really. There are also uh, hardware manufacturers who would be interested in some games for their hardware. Uh, so, for example, one idea is uh, that there are in-flight. Uh, systems and so basically that's a screen mounted in your uh, in your seat like in front of your seat if you're traveling by plane or or bus and uh, we have some deals that we would we have some our games on on such uh, devices so basically they're just sit there and if you have a misfortune of like running out running out of a battery for your own tablet uh, then you're stuck in a plane and you don't have anything else to play than our games, which is like quite good. Uh, there's also um, like some kind of uh, manufacturer in Poland for uh, activities that kids do like in a theme park. There is some kind of a games that they can play on, on they are built especially for, for this game. And they approach us and ask if we want to port our games to their uh, platform. So it was pretty technically it was not a problem for us. So right now there is a, a theme park in Poznan where you can play our games like using uh, balls that you throw at the targets and stuff like that, which is quite cool. Okay, at Twitch. Uh, announced that you can also put games in, in on on their on their website as a extension to the uh, site, so it's pretty uh, pretty new and that's uh, opportunity that we would like to follow uh, very closely. So because it's not it's, it's this platform is at a very very early stage, so. We don't know which which way it would go. It will go, but it's pretty promising. We also do a lot of advertising games, 
uh, because our games, uh, like I said, HTML5 is a website, so you can. It's very easy to change the graphics. So uh, we can just take whatever graphics uh, some kind of like ad and agency will send us, and we can put that in the game uh, without any effort. So uh, we're doing some games for like McDonald's and uh, some fashion brands in in Poland, and it's quite well it's uh, usually this work is <laughs> have to be done for to like tomorrow because all those ad agencies work that way that every has everything has to be done like right now uh but it's kind of good money for us compared to like how much work it is because we already have the games ready and we can just like put the logo there and we're happy with it uh it's a company that uh I kind of helped create. Uh, it's called Kinka Games, uh, and it's uh, it was set up by Eva Boinska from Poznan, from Poland, and they're using uh, the idea was that they will make games for uh, children with disabilities, and uh, well, the idea was that she wanted to do that from from their own like uh, initiative. She want, there was no no business attached to that but after she done some games and like put them over there in the internet uh, they f well they saw that nobody else is doing games for children with disabilities and like it's a huge niche and right now their games are very popular there and they are actually getting some money out of it from like grants and some donations and so on so it turned out to be a successful business in the end. Okay, so some more some more charts right now. So this is our revenue per game. Like Valerie said, we have uh, like a lot of games. I think uh, like over 100 are right now out there circling in the internet somewhere. So uh, as you can see, uh, like up till here, we didn't really have any hit game, right? Like all the all the revenue is similar for every game every month. Some some are making a little bit more, some are making a little bit less. But it's not like we have one or two games that are earning and the others are not. We have like pretty uh, stable revenue per each game. And uh, if you look at the uh, like uh, subscription, license, and uh, sales and ads, it also adds up to like very similar levels. So basically, this makes us quite independent. I would say we are not really dependent on any platform or any publisher or any game. We can easily switch them from one place to another or if there is a like a huge problem with I don't know one platform or or anything we can just like totally cancel it and it doesn't really hurt us that much. So to summarize like our uh, HTML5 is a cool technology. That's that's uh, one thing. Second thing is like be as close as possible to when uh, some platform emerges because if if it if it work out, you'll you'll have a very good visibility and and because being first on some platform is really important. And everybody is playing video games like everywhere, so uh, be sure to to think of like not only PC players but also other people who would like to play a game and maybe they can't or it's not possible for them. And if you'll get there. You, you will have very loyal players. Cool, so thank you very much. And if you have any questions, go ahead, yeah? Uh, hello again, thank you. Uh, please, uh, uh, is uh, your games for old phones and uh, cheap phones is uh, also HTML5 HTML games? Is your games for old phone yeah. is uh, HTM5 games? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's so right. so it works. <laughs> uh, with some uh, technical hacks, yeah. Okay, yeah. thank you. Oh, 
Um, okay, thank you. I uh, have two questions. Uh, one is, uh, how much promotion do you need to do to make the game successful? Maybe what's your ratio of like development time to development to promotion efforts? Okay, so we don't really do any promotion. Like, we don't pay for uh, for any ads or anything. That's everything we get is organic. So basically, promotion is just like put a tweet, put a Facebook post, send some emails. That's it, and it all happens. Uh, if if so, yeah, basically that. Oh, okay, that's cool. Uh, and second question: You mentioned countries that like other companies don't want to work with, like Pakistan and other. Uh, where's actually money coming from? Because I imagine ads, they like people don't have anything to advertise there. So in this Pakistani thing, they pay a subscription. It's very little. Like uh, I think they they're paying like one dollar per month to get all the games. But if there are like 180 million people in Pakistan, and it, since there are no other games, we kind of get okay from from uh, from even that little subscription divided by the, all the games that we have. So it's uh, it's scraps. But if you put all those scraps together, you have something very quite big. Okay, thank you. Uh, did you advertise? Uh, your games inside your games. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, uh, since we have so many of them, it's very often we put some uh, cross promotion. So if you finished playing one game, we show you some kind of like, hey, play this game next. It's similar or as nice as this game, and it's actually working for us nicely. So people are like, once they get to the website and start playing, they can actually circle around all our games and and play all of them or some of them, not only one. Okay, another question. Um, can you um, name some strange platforms for uh, for educational, for kids uh, applications? Mm -hmm. When when parents choose what uh, what to download to to use with kids? Okay, so basically w the problem, we, we tried that, and the problem we had with educational platforms is that Usually they try to be too educational about the games, and they are not fun, and the kids don't don't want to play them. And we actually we have uh, some talks with uh, two uh, such uh, platforms, and uh, it fell down because they wanted that very educational, like yeah, kids need to do a lot of uh, activities like home homework. Basically, and we were telling like, no, no, just put some ideas of some educational things there, but make the game fun, and they didn't want that. So, so yeah, but uh, it would be very uh, nice idea to have an educational portal with actually fun games that are fun to play and are educational at the same time. So now perfect. you can't name like some. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. I have one question uh, yeah. to you from my side. You show the chart and to, and told that okay, like uh, till uh, you told like till our first hit. Could you tell us about the hit? Uh, yeah, that was a game that we put on Facebook Instant Games, and it was actually pretty funny because we were uh, choosing which games should go there first, and a friend of mine said like, yeah, we should put this game and. He chose a game called Furious Speed, which you could imagine is a pretty simple uh, like racing game. And I told him, no, this game is not very good. Come on. Uh, but he said, no, no, let's 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 put it. I already uploaded the files. And actually, it's figure out like f that was for some time that was the only racing game on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> it was yeah, it was pretty crazy, like you so. saw. So I was totally wrong about it. I thought this game wouldn't be uh, played by anybody, and it was played by like 40 million people, I guess. So, full your speed. speed. Yeah. Yes. Since then, there are like 20 or 30 or 50 racing games, and every single one is better. But uh, we were the first one. I have a question yeah. too. You told about the platform for disabled kids. Mm -hmm. uh, was uh, the development some uh, other for this platform? 
or gameplay uh, did you make some changes for so it's them? it's it's not my company I only like uh, consulted with them and help them choose the technology and so on but yeah they are actually uh, doing a lot of uh, accessibility for for the games and actually we started uh, based on their uh, ex experience we started making our games more accessible as well and it's very important because like for casual players uh, the ease easiness easiness of uh, getting into the game is very important so the more accessible you do the game the more open it is and uh, the the easier for the um, like player without disabilities so uh yeah it's uh, if you are asking about technologies, it's like uh, mostly uh, that you don't really rely on one sense uh, with uh, communication to the player. So if something something's happen, there should be a sound, there should be some animation, there should be some effect, and it should just like uh, be very uh, not very quick. So you will have time to comprehend with that. Uh, yeah, uh, there is there is actually a very good event in, in Poznan called uh, All Play. It's a conference and game jam about accessibility, and they are covering really cool topics there. So I can send you some materials about that later. Yeah. Any more questions? No. Then thank you very much. Thank you very much.